Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Sew. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a meditation cushion, also known as a Zafu. You can also use this method uh, for any cushion you wanna make that has a side panel, a top and a bottom and a side. So like a dog bed or a floor cushion or a cushion for a bench, you can use what we're gonna show. Now, Zafus are easy, um, easily found online and they don't cost a whole lot of money, but you might be like me and you have all the supplies you need already on hand. Or you may just like to make stuff, which is always fun. This is an easy project, and so if you're ready, let's go. All right, first you're gonna need some fabric, and you want durable fabric, something that's not slippery, something you can sit on a lot, and it's gonna last, so upholstery fabric or quilting cotton is good. Now how much fabric you want will depend on the width of the fabric. If you have 59 inch fabric, you want about 24 inches or two thirds of a yard. If you do not, you'll need a little more and you can always piece different fabrics together to get enough of what you need. You'll need a cutting instrument, scissors or rotary cutter, a marking instrument, pin, and you'll need pins for pinning, of course, a hand needle, thread, a sewing machine, a piece of string or selvage in my case, and a ruler. Oh, and you're also gonna need some stuffing. I have some cotton batting. I'm gonna use what I have on hand. So I have some cotton batting, but I'm not gonna use too much of it because cotton is prone to mildew in the damp where I live. But I have some, also some polyester fiber fill, and you could unstuff a pillow to get some of this if you don't have new stuff. And I have lots of fabric scraps for my sewing. So let's talk about stuffing. You can use polyester fiber fill, 100% of it. You can use fabric waste, which could be scraps like this or like old t-shirts and old clothes. You can use a pillow form if you already have one and you just want to make a cover or a piece of foam if you're making a different type of cushion. You could use buckwheat holes, which is traditional in Zafu pillows because they are dense and they hold their shape really well and they take for sitting on. And there's also K-Pok, which you'll find in the higher end Zafu pillows. It's much more environmentally friendly than cotton and polyester. So go ahead and iron your fabric. Always iron it before you cut it. Let's start with the side piece. The side needs to be as tall as you want the cushion, plus seam allowance. So a traditional Zafu pillow cushion is six to nine inches tall, depending on how tall you are. I'm gonna make mine six inches tall, plus I need seam allowance. I'm gonna add an extra inch, so I have a half inch on the top and a half inch on the bottom of seam allowance to sew to the top and the bottom of the cushion. I've also folded my fabric in fours so that I don't have to cut 59 inches, one whole 59 inches. So if you don't have fabric that is 59 inches wide, you can cut many pieces or a few pieces that are all the same height and then sew them together to make your side. The side is one continuous side plus enough for an overlap. Then put that aside and we're gonna cut the top and the bottom. A traditional Zafu pillow is 12 to 14 inches and it's a circle. Again, you're gonna need a half inch seam allowance all along the circle. So I'm gonna cut mine to be uh, it's a 12 inch circle and I need a, uh, to make it 13 inches for the seam allowance. I could find something that is um, round in my house to trace, but chances of going around measuring everything and having that object, eh, too much time. So I got a piece of string, in my case a selvage, and I'm tying it to my writing instrument. Then I want it to be a 13 inch, 13 inch wide uh, circle, so I did it halfway, six and a half, and I'm double checking that I have enough fabric. Notice I'm holding down the string with my thumb. Do not do that. And here's why. Because when I cut it out, it was way too big. So, you do use the string, but put a straight pin at the six and a half inches or however, whatever half you want. Hold the straight pin down, make sure the knot is always on the right side of the marking instrument, and then trace your circle much more accurate. When you go to cut, if you're right-handed, you wanna cut on the outside of the line so the line's to your right, and if you're left-handed, cut so that the line is to your left. You'll get a much smoother cut. Then after cutting, double check that it is actually the correct size that you need. 
and it is usually. So remember, use a straight pin instead of your thumb, much more accurate. On the side piece, my piece is 59 inches wide. So I have left the selvage on to keep the raw edges nice and clean. I don't have raw edges on the short ends. If you have a raw edge because your fabric wasn't wide enough, you wanna fold it under twice to encase that raw edge. And remember, this is going to overlap with the other side, so only one edge will need to be um, cleaned. So let's start mark making the pleat marks. You're gonna go from one edge over six and a half inches and make a mark. And we're doing this on the wrong side of the fabric. So go ahead and mark over six and a half inches. And then you're gonna mark over one and a half inches from that first mark. One, two, three. Three halves make one and a half. What do you know? And then we're gonna go over three inches. One, two, three. Make a mark. Those are your first marks. So it will go three inches, one and a half inches, then three inches, one and a half inches, all the way down the top edge of your fabric. And then you need to transfer these marks to the bottom edge. One way you can do that is you can line up your short edge so it's nice and straight and you know these are straight. Now this is the easy way, the not so accurate way, but accurate enough for pleats. You're not wearing this cushion Fit is not a concern here. So this is a quick and easy way to transfer the marks. However, you could take a ruler and you could mark across the bottom just like you did the top. Or if you have a see-through ruler, you can line up one of the lines on the see-through ruler to the top edge, the cut edge of your side, and then just transfer the marks down. At the end, you should have about six inches or so left. And this is great because remember, we're gonna have that overlap. One side is gonna go for overlap, the other side, and that gives you the opening to put the stuffing in. So let's make the pleats now. Starting with the short end toward you, at your first mark, you're gonna take it up to your second mark. Go ahead and pinch at that first mark, and then you just get it to kiss that second mark, right? And keep your edges, um, the, on the long edge, you want to keep them straight, kind of lined up with each other. And then pin them in place through all three layers of fabric here. And of course on both ends of the pleat. And you want to make it so your pin heads stick out because you're going to sew these down and you need to be able to remove the pin easily. So up the whole strip of the side, the whole strip of fabric, you're gonna make these pleats. You're gonna take your first mark, you're gonna pinch it up to hit your second mark. The pleats are the one and a half inch marks, the marks that have one and a half inches in between them. You're gonna do this the whole length of the side. Make sure all your pleats are facing one direction. When you have this all done, you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna baste this down. You're gonna baste these pleats, pleats down. You only have a half inch seam allowance, so baste in between the edge of the fabric and a half inch, and then you don't have to remove those basting stitches. When you're done basting, go ahead and iron those pleats down nice and flat. All right, we're gonna get all our pieces together, tops, bottom, sides, and some pins, and we're gonna start pinning one of the tops or bottom to the side piece. Now remember, this is gonna overlap somewhere. We're gonna fold parts over and we're not quite sure where. So starting anywhere on the top piece or the bottom piece, and we're gonna start roughly in the center of our side piece and start pinning the um, top to the side. Don't stretch your circle because it is cut on the bias there and it will overstretch. So just gently line up the two raw edges and walk that top on down the side seam, um, side piece, sorry. When you get to the end, stop when you have about four or five inches, somewhere around there, and then start going in the opposite direction from the middle. Pin it all the way again until you have about four or five inches left at the end. All right. So now we're gonna look at the pleats. They're all going in one direction and that's gonna tell me which side of the short ends is gonna overlap the other one. 
go ahead and the piece that's going to be on the outside, the piece that overlaps, is going to be the one that will be pinned down first to the top of the pillow. Go ahead and fold over that selvage, or if you have a raw edge that has been zigzagged, go ahead and fold that over first and then take the second short end of the side piece, overlap it and pin it down. So you're pinning them down separately, but you're pinning them down on top of each other. When you got the whole thing pinned down, you're gonna take it to your machine and you're gonna sew it down with a half inch seam allowance. It's gonna fit under your machine like this, and when you start, you can start anywhere. So go ahead and um, back tack when you start and then with your fingers, try and make sure the edges line up with each other and then back tack when you finish. Then it's all sewn, sewn all the way around. Then you wanna take your iron and just set those stitches. And then you wanna go open it up to the inside and press the seam allowance out. And the reason you do this it really makes that seam line nice and flat. When you don't press it, you're gonna end up with this little like ridge. See how it comes up and then it dents down and then it comes up again. So go ahead and iron that seam flat. Just make sure that the seam allowance underneath it is all going in the same direction. Then iron your little overlap there and let's pin the bottom on. Again, Start in the center of the side seam, not where it overlapped, not on one of the ends, and go all the way around. Well, you go in one direction until you get about four or five inch till the short end. And then you go back to the center and you start pinning in the opposite direction. Then when you get to the end here, again like we did on the other side, we're going to pin them one at a time down to the bottom edge, to the bottom piece of the pillow. In this way, if things didn't quite line up, if your pleats were a little off, your overlap might be a little off too, but nobody's gonna see that part. So that gives you a little freedom, a little wiggle room. Then again, go back to your machine and with a half inch seam allowance, you're gonna sew all the way around the edge. Again, back tack where you start and when you stop. Then all sewn, go ahead again and iron your seam down. And <laughs> you also want to um, iron it out on the opposite side too. So pull it right side out. Voila, our cover. And see how it really puckers like that. See on the side we ironed, it lays a little flatter. But on this side, you've got that pucker where the seam is. So go ahead and try and get it kind of flat. It's not gonna be perfect. And iron that seam. Well, that's better. Okay, now time to find that opening and we're gonna get to stuffing this pillow. Where is it? Oh yeah, there it is. Now, if you have different types of stuffing like I do, uh, cause I'm trying to use what I have, you wanna go ahead and mix it before you start stuffing. So mix the different types together before you start putting it in your pillow because you want your cushion to have a nice, even feel to it. You don't want all of one type of stuffing at one end. So get it mixed, pre-mix it. And then go ahead and start feeding that cavernous pillow. This thing takes a lot a lot of stuffing, way more than um, I had. In fact, I've had to undo my finished cushion and stuff it some more. So do plan on it taking a lot of stuffing. All right, when you get it all stuffed, it's time to close it up. Find your opening, there's mine right there. And we're gonna take the uh, thread and hand needle to close it up. Now remember, when you do some hand sewing, the end that came off the spool of thread first is the end that goes through your needle. We're not doubling the thread, it's a single strand of thread. Tying the knot, simple knot, and then we're gonna hide that knot. That's not my opening, there it is. Hide the knot by going up through the fold there. 
and come out right where the crease is. And then you're gonna grab a little, couple of threads with the needle on the um, under part of the side seam. And then you're gonna bring the needle up and then it comes out at the fold or near the fold. And I had to get a thimble because if you have upholstery fabric like mine, it's tough to uh, push that needle through. So I'm gonna show you close up. My, the first couple of stitches on my hand stitching are always a little sloppy, but then I figure out, oh yeah, this is how I hold the fabric. And right here, how I hold the fabric, I fold it and hold the fold. And then I come through the fold on the bottom piece and then up through the fold on the top piece, the piece that overlaps. And I don't pull my stitches tight every time. I do a few stitches um, down the road and then I will pull it tight. You don't want to pull too tight because you don't want your fabric to pucker. Just do a couple, few stitches at a time and see, and then you can go ahead and pull it like that. Do this all the way to the end of the opening. When you get to the end, you need a simple knot which you may not be able to hide, but if you do it small enough, it won't matter. So the knot I prefer, I stick the needle in and I leave a loop of thread. My thumb is around it right now. Can you see that loop of thread? I don't pull the thread all the way down to the fabric. Then I stick the needle through that loop and you leave a second loop and the needle then goes through that second loop and then pull tight and voila, a nice little knot. Okay, you're all done. If you have any questions about this cushion, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.